M is for Mason. G is for Graham. B for Betcha. This is the MGB Wrestling Podcast, the podcast with PG rated material accessible to wrestling fans of all ages. My name is Graham Bagshaw, and my co-host and creator of this podcast is proof that wrestling fans live with their parents, my 10-year-old son, Mason. All right, Mason. Um, actually, I told you a slight lie. I just told you that I wanted to um, do an intro for the start of the episode that we just recorded. Um, I actually kept this from you for a few weeks, because I don't think you realized. Um, this episode's actually episode 50. It is? Yeah, you've actually recorded. Oh. That's the 50th episode. If you add them all up, um, I'd miscounted on one. Matt actually reminded me, which is kind of lucky because I was doing it off the top of my head. Um, there's all the MGBs. There's obviously the Nova Pros. Now, I remember that the three Commonwealth Cups got separated into three episodes. I remembered that. And then Matt's like, don't forget Z1. And I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. The very first episode of Nova Pro. Mm-hmm. Um, Fury Pro. Yeah. And if you add all those up. 50. That makes this one 50. Now, I actually put out on Twitter that, hey, we're going to do 50. I was like, Mason doesn't realize. I was like, if anyone wants to say anything, like a few words, then I can read them out or I can actually, i got a clip to play as well. So, um, Benjamin Banks, at Benji Banks, says, congrats on reaching uh, episode 50. Pinky's up to 50 more. Uh, Zachary Shiloh says, congrats, well-earned Graham. I got nothing to do with it at all, uh, Zachary. Um, It's all Mason, but thank you for that comment anyway. Um, The Is It Over Yet podcast, uh, 50 episodes. That's impressive, boys. Well done. Hashtag, you still got it. Um, I'm trying to remember some of these. I should have written down what episodes some of these people appeared on. Um, At Dej Kirkby, this one's a little bit longer. A massive congratulations on 50 episodes. From someone who has listened to every episode without fail, I'm glad I've been able to go on this journey with the Bagshaw family. From the idea of a podcast to 50 episodes, just wow. You guys have improved all the time, but still you've kept the very core of the podcast. A father and his son enjoy. Oh, sorry, a father and his sons enjoying wrestling because we've got Scott Jackson mm-hmm. now too. Um, you guys are legit awesome, and I'll be listening along for the next 50 episodes. Give yourself a round of applause. Graham, Mason, and Jackson, you truly deserve it. Thank you. I forgot that Jackson was mentioning on the end there, but yeah, he's definitely a part of the podcast now. In fact, that's probably my biggest regret that you call this MGB, that he doesn't get a letter in there as well. I try to think of some way around it. I actually thought it could be Mason's Good Buddies, MGB. Oh. Because then that includes when we get guest hosts on as well. It doesn't have to be just the Bagshaw family, because we had no idea at the start that we'd even have guests. The fact that we've had multiple guests, to me, is still crazy. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just going to be us two. I certainly didn't think Jackson would do it at all for one second. So, anyway. Scott Perkins. Congrats, boys, on 50 episodes. I know I speak for all the Blade Job guys. It's been a pleasure seeing your show grow to where it is, and I'm proud to call you friends and colleagues. Cheers. High voltage, Scott Perkins. That's pretty cool, right? Mm-hmm. All right. And there's one more, which I will probably have to edit in, from the Matt Attack UK. Hey Mason, Jackson and Graham, it's Matt from the Matt Attack Podcast here. Um, congratulations on all three of you on reaching 50 podcasts. Um, it's a fantastic listen, you guys are naturals. It's a pleasure and a privilege every time I've been involved with you guys. Um, here's for the next 50. Um, you have a Matt Attacking awesome Christmas and as always guys, I am out of here. All right, that was the last one, Mason. So what have you got to say for yourself? What do you think about all that? 50 episodes is pretty cool. It is. And the reason, of course, we didn't realize is just because we've been labeling the Nova Pro episode separately. So I think the I think we're at 34 MGBs right now, wow. regular MGBs. But that shows you how much work you've done on the independence recordings as well the fact that they're 16 and nothing to do with uh, wwe as well mm. which i know we said that was something we wanted to do but i think yeah. that's really impressive you got that any favorite moments favorite moments All i know i'm putting you on the spot right now because you had no idea i was going to do this my favorite moments i i like jackson having the are you smarter than a four-year-old and i like matt on the podcast i like everybody on the podcast I like it when we have guests. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think it's that's fun that extra we, fun. 
I think it's fun when we got other people to talk to besides ourselves, and it's always good to get some uh, different opinions as well. But yeah, no, I love it that Jay's excited to do this as well. Mm -hmm. He he loves being part of this, and the fact that people are so receptive to him as well. Uh, people like Josh Fuller recently, um, and the fact that Jackson was actually there for that, th that was really cool. Yeah. Because normally we've had to just record his part separately, and he still likes doing that. Yeah. He's like, I want to record a podcast. You pick him up from daycare, he's the only four-year-old who goes, I want to do a podcast. But you know exactly what he means. And the thing is, like, before this podcast ever, like, got, came to mind, I was, like, a terrible speaker. And, like... So, I had a concert with my violin, and then they asked me, well, they asked everybody who wanted to do it, but I, I, I didn't get the part because it was a drawing from the hat, and I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. But before, I probably would have said, no, I don't want to do it. But, but you now volunteered to I, do that? Huh? You volunteered to do that? Yeah. Oh, cool. But I just I didn't, didn't get to do it because uh, people got name got drawn before mine, but mm -hmm. I'm perfectly fine with it because I'm talking right now when I have no like nerve anymore mm -hmm. and i listened to the first ever podcast we did it kind of sounded a little <laughs> terrible <laughs> i listened to it as well it was actually i listened to about our fifth episode now i think it was mm -hmm. which was the second nova pro we did we picked it up pretty quickly actually mm. um I'm, I'm gonna read you one more quote and i literally posted this within the last 20 minutes or so somebody mentioned i just told you about um people at nova pro who support you and got your back and they're mm -hmm. like yeah you don't mess with mason um i just put on here he doesn't know but we will release the 50th mgb podcast this week it's amazing how much he has progressed and how much more articulate he has become because of his podcast also testament to the kindness from his fellow fans and wrestlers how much he loves going to nova pro as well but yeah no everyone's picked up on that and actually i think i saw uh, josh full have commented on it already um, I wasn't necessarily going to read you that comment straight away, but since you've just mentioned as well that you've noticed how much it's helped you improve, mm -hmm. um, I put, uh, oh yeah, Josh Fuller put, I've noticed this too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, people around who've been listening as well have definitely noticed the improvement as well. So um, any aims for the next 50 episodes then? Um, we, we've done so much in 50. Maybe try and get some promotional stuff out of it. So you want like a commercial? Yeah. <laughs> That would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, I say why not? Because I had no... I told you when we started this, hey, we might only get 10 people doing this, and half of them was probably going to be your family. And you were still okay to do it with that, and I was still okay to do it with that. I have no idea how many listeners we have. We don't do the figures. It comes from the network. Now we don't do it on YouTube. We don't see how many I people it is. Know. I kind of don't care either. I know we have people who listen, and I know there's people who like it. And there's and... people like Matt who listen to it like five times. <laughs> If we did find that, and that's the one of the things that skewed those first figures, yeah, he used to probably listen to it multiple times. So um, we don't know, but yeah, we've made great friends that way as well. And mm -hmm. um, we went to England and we visited Matt, and uh, yeah, this podcast has brought many things that we didn't th think about. Yeah. We've already talked to some really cool wrestlers. Mm -hmm. um, I re-listened to the um, Ugly Ducklings quiz the other day. Matt released it as one of his Christmas crackers as like a highlight for the year. I laughed out loud listening to it in the gym. That that was so funny. I'll play that for you again. Yeah, there's been a lot of great moments. It's tough to say, but yeah, who knows where you're going to be in another 50 episodes. Um, I think the only thing that's going to be different is we've got to change the intro because I talked about that because I introduce it as with my 10-year-old son, Mason, mm -hmm. and you're only going to be 10 for one more month. And um, we're going to have to do Are You Smarter Than a 5-Year-Old as well because Jackson's only got two more months of that as well. Yeah. But I think that's pretty cool. All right, I think we've got enough there for the little intro, but I wanted you to realize it was episode 50. But I thought that was a cool little thing to add in at the start of that episode. All right, Mason, we're going back in time a little bit. Um, we went to the second Fury Pro Wrestling event, and um, we decided we wanted to go back and do the first one. So um, I think it was Pivot Share, I think is where I actually found this online. So when we had a snow day in, I think it was November, we actually went back and watched it. And um, we already knew some of the results, unfortunately, yeah. because um, I think we actually did it as a challenge for you on, mm -hmm. um, against Jackson. Um, but we went back to watch the matches. It was kind of different because, obviously, the second one, we were there in person, and this one was actually filmed. So, anyway. All right, match one was um, Shotzi Blackheart versus Zoe Sky. Um, what do you want to talk about for this one? Yeah, we saw Zoe in the main event for the Fury 2. We did, yeah. Yeah. Shotzi is with Alicia. Um, she does the. She does. You know how Alicia Fox does her like bridge when she pins and then her. Uh -huh. She did that. Shotzi Blackheart did that. Ah, okay. I. I that's gotta hurt your toes. Mm. This is very recent. I was just watching the soccer before we started recording. Um, Mason. Uh, 
Jackson called her Chelsea Blackheart. He was watching the Chelsea soccer game, and for some reason he was like, oh, Chelsea Blackheart. I was like, there's Chelsea Green. But I don't know if he was getting all confused. I know that's a totally random thing to be talking about. Um, anything else? She did the walls of Jericho. Um, she it did was, a few things. Yeah. I also had that there was um, what looked like a Styles Clash, and then it was switched into um, a sharpshooter. But yeah, certainly Walls of Jericho, same thing. I think it depends how you... And I'm not quite sure on the subtleties of them. I think it depends mm -hmm. who actually does the move. Um, I got a few things randomly from the event. And we certainly recognised fans. Yeah. Like, we were looking from where the camera was, and we're like, oh yeah, we saw that. Um, we saw them at the second one. Um, Zoe's actually been wrestling for ten years, it said. I, I didn't know that. She's only come into my consciousness fairly recently, within like the last six months, with a few of her podcasts, um, and having seen her as well. Um, I put there was a few good exchanges in the beginning. Uh, Zoe's first pin attempt was a one count. You rarely see a one count in wrestling. Normally it's like a and two, kick out at two. At but... Nova Pro, there was a zero count. <laughs> there was Somebody one. pinned him, and then the ref <laughs> didn't even get his hand down, and then Isaiah Frazier already kicked out. It's pretty poor judgment. If you're going for a pin, and you're not even getting a count of one, or you're getting a count of one, that means you've gone in for it way too early. And we also noticed as well that um, Brian was on the outside of the ring as well. Mm -hmm. um, and since we've re watched this as well, Brian, the former Nova Pro ring announcer as well, which I, I don't know what happened there. Um, we're big fans of Brian. Um, it was certainly nice to see him there. Um, I don't have anything else except for Mason has the end. So do you want to tell us how this match finished? I don't even remember who won, actually. Oh, I have one more thing. Zoe pushed um, Shotzi's legs down, and she lifts her face up, and then she kicks Shotzi's face. It's oh, kinda, she did? It has to hurt. That has to hurt bad. Oh, I'm sure. And then Zoe wins with the backstabber. Okay. You know when they put yeah. the... Oh. Yeah, I know, I know what that move is. Yep. Um, there was also a very good sportsmanship I put in this as mm -hmm. well. Um, they hugged it out at the end. And in fact, um, I even have Zoe was leading the Shotzi chant at the end as well. Um, I like seeing Shotzi. Uh, we've seen her twice now at Nova Pro. Uh, we saw her once at Fury Pro, and that second event we talked to her, and um, yeah, I I'm a big fan of both of those two people. I'd like to see more of Zoe Sky. Has she been at Nova Pro? I think so, but we just didn't see it. Oh, okay. Because I was trying to remember. I don't remember seeing her there, but hopefully we can get to see more of her as well. All right, match two. Well, we definitely recognize both of these people. It was uh, Victor Benjamin with uh, Lady Frost and versus PB Smooth, mm -hmm. who we actually saw at um, AIW Wrestling um, almost a year ago as we were recording this. Yeah. And in fact, interestingly, we were at Nova Pro last night and we got to see Swoggle's debut and that's who PB Smooth was tagging with at yeah. AIW and they won the tag team titles. And you yeah. actually got pictures with both of those. So when we actually post this online, that'll be one of the pictures I'll actually post um, to say we've released this. Speaking about uh, Lady Frost, mm -hmm. I, I made up a move for her. She bites somebody, and then you call that Frost Bite. <laughs> you told me that was a finisher move at one point. I was like, I don't know if that's a finisher, but that would could certainly be a move in between. Unless she draws blood. Unless she goes all like all Dracula on him. I don't know. <laughs> I like the name, though. It sounds really good. Um, I'm not sure. Does she have any finishing moves? I don't know. Now, we don't always... Of course, we don't always listen to the matches, though, because we're normally yeah. there. So we don't often go back and watch them on Nova Pro. Perhaps we need to listen to the commentary sometimes and find out. Oh, I, I know Kevin Ford one. often does the... Often yeah, does when, when, you, when you do a backbreaker, breaking the ice. <laughs> There's a few. All right, you need to give this some fun. We need to be passing these on. Now, we also just heard that um, Lady Frost is actually trying out at WWE. Oh. Um, there was tryouts down in Florida, I guess at that NXT camp or whatever it is. And I think that was broken by a Dark Match Podcast. I think I saw they they posted it and then re re bleh, retweeted it as well. And uh, yeah, um, that would be great. I actually posted on our behalf as well. Good luck, Lady Frost. Um, go get your own back on Oscar. Because she had that match, but she was more of a jobber. She was only in for like 90 seconds or something. But mm -hmm. she has a character. Yeah. I think that's a huge part of it. She stands out. Um, she might still be learning wrestling in terms of she's not wrestled as much, but... I totally believe that she could do that. I'm totally rooting for her. I would really like it if she could uh, make it up to WWE. I think yeah. that would be great. Um, okay, what have you got for this match then? Um, PB, um, he stepped over the top rope like Braun Strowman. <sighs> I think he's taller than Braun. I didn't remember him being that tall. I think they announced he was like seven foot. Yeah, now, I think he's I think taller the, than Braun. I think the thing is, though, when you stood next to Swoggle, <laughs> you naturally kind of look tall anyway, and I don't think I yeah. thought much of I'm it. I'm a little but... taller than Swoggle. <laughs> 
yeah, so I didn't even really appreciate it, but when he came in, it was like, oh my goodness, yeah, he was, um, he was really big. Yeah, you thought um, PB stand stood for peanut butter? Well, you can get smooth peanut butter uh, oh. in, in the general sense. I thought it meant that. pretty boy. Ah. I don't know, and we talked about that last night on the way home, because if yeah. you're smooth as well, that would fit in with that character. I think it's a double meaning. Um, I never really thought about it, but I know you can get you can either get smooth peanut butter or crunchy peanut butter. So I always put it in terms of those two things. Now, what have I got here? Told crowd to be quiet after she announced Victor Benjamin. Oh, Lady Frost, of course. She was playing her normal role. Um, she, was, that, she plays a heel character most of the times. And of course, when you ask the crowd to be quiet, all you're mm -hmm. going to get is boo. And actually, in this time, the crowd started laughing as well. So yeah. she didn't really get away on this Victor one. Victor Benjamin picked up PB Smooth and superplexed him. Yeah. I mean, suplexed him, not... Mm -hmm. Now, actually, I did write down on here, it does say PB Smooth is seven foot tall. That, that's crazy. He's also listed as a wrestler on MCW on his Facebook page. Um, I haven't. I don't know when. Um, I, we've only been that one um, like almost a year ago. I occasionally look at the results, but I, I don't know. I haven't seen him there in a year, but it might just be I missed those, possibly. And the most memorable moment of this whole entire um, event was Victor Benjamin gave... Um, PB Smooth a super um, a Superman Savage punch. Oh yeah, yeah. Now I got I only got one other thing for this, um, and it was the fact that it says PB Smooth was actually um, trained by Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae. It was that really surprised me? But oh. he, with him being at AIW, and obviously they're AIW people yeah. as well, I guess that sort of makes. Uh, and I got the sense. ending. Uh, and I didn't, so I left that one to Victor you. Victor Benjamin yeah. gave um, PB Smooth a low blow. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't remember that at all. So it's a good job you wrote that one down. Okay. Um, anything else for this match? No. All right. Um, what else have we got? Match three. Now, it's uh, Gemma Cross, accompanied by Brittany Blake, versus, uh, versus uh, Luscious Latasha. Now, I've got on here, it says um, a one fall, but the crowd interrupts um, because they say it's for 20 minutes match. Now, I think all those matches are actually on time when we went to Fury Pro last time, because I think it said it was like 15 minutes or something yeah. like that. So, um, okay, what have you got for this one? Oh, I do get that Brittany left as soon as the match stopped, yeah. which I thought was kind of weird. Normally, if you're a manager, you expect... Because I thought she was going to be on the side, she's going to interfere in the match, and actually, she just left. She didn't really play much of a part of it at all. Um, so, the, so Gemma Craw, um, I mean, Luscious Latasha... She, it's a back of, it's a backwards um face plant. Okay. The head hits the ground. Mm -hmm. That sometimes, that could give you a concussion. I think a lot of those moves could give you a concussion. I'm always surprised actually that there's not as many concussions um, as there actually are. There's a lot of those when them. I know some of them like when they slam their head into the post. I know some of those mm -hmm. like there's padding and stuff. Um, the, but yeah, I, I agree. I some found of those out moves. Siege, like you know how Edge has a has a neck injury. I thought you were going to say has a neck. I was going to say, yep, I know that. Yes, um, he had a neck injury, yes. I saw Sage Phillips when he got superplexed. It, when his hands were falling back, it looked like he, like he put his hands to cover his neck. Ah, that it's, would be sensible. Yeah. A lot of the times, the wrestlers, they get them in that position and they make sure that their neck's protected before they slam them down. Because obviously you don't want to injure your opponent because... That's your livelihood right there. And similarly, yeah. when you're in that position, you want the other person to look after you as well. Um, I remember um, AJ Styles and um, James, James Ellsworth. Ellsworth. And James Ellsworth got himself in totally the wrong position. And luckily, um, AJ realized and he backed out of the move. But yeah, they're really looking out for things like that to try and help them. Now, I don't have anything specific from the match, except for I researched some of these people because I didn't know much about them. Um, Luscious Latasha is actually part of the uh, Shine. Uh, wrestling group, which I'd heard of. Uh, she was in Shine 54 pay-per-view, part of Team Rainbow. Uh, she also lost a title at Full Throttle Pro Wrestling in August when teaming with Jenna Van Mussels. I don't recognize that name, but it sounds kind of cool. I like that. And also, uh, Jenna was part of Rise and Shine, and she actually lost to Sonya Deville last year on NXT. Wow. So I think that was the other reason why I included that there. So it's interesting when you look at some of the matches these people have had. Like, everyone seems to have at least one big match against somebody who's really cool like that. So, uh, yeah, that was actually fairly recent. I have the said. ending. You do? Yeah. Oh, I got one thing on this, but yeah, go ahead. 
So Gemma Cross wins with feet on the rope. And I had exactly the same thing. That reminds me of like King when he was fighting in like James Ellsworth's hometown. So the ref was uh, like related to James, I think, mm -hmm. is what he said. And he said that the ref was counting. James had the feet. I had his feet on the ropes. The ref saw that, but he kept counting. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Anything else for this one? No. Alright, let's move on. The next one was, um, and I wasn't familiar with either of these two wrestlers, I've got to admit. Uh, Jenny Rose and Stella Gray. Although I think one of them appeared at, um, I want to say one of them appeared at Nova Pro in November. But I can't remember which one. It won't be Stella Gray. Cause Why she, not? I think she just started wrestling. Oh, okay. Um, Stella Gray is fairly new. I have Jenny that Jenny Rose. Okay, it might have been. Well, you, they bring new people up as well. True, but... But I don't remember which one it is. It was I'd... like a year that she started and then... Okay, remember people like Alley Cat? They went straight from the... <laughs> not even wrestling and then went straight up, so it's possible, but yeah, I don't know. Okay, yeah. go ahead. What have you got for this one? Um, Submission to Gray by Jenny Rose. <laughs> that's it? No. <laughs> and a fisherman suplex and... Yeah, that's... Jenny wins with no doubt. Okay, all right. Um, I, f I actually looked up both of these people because I didn't know anything about them, and I did write down um, Stella Gray was fairly new. Um, Jenny Rose and Stella Gray actually tag team together they did? Um, with Tennille Dashwood in a Ring of Honor match. Tennille Dashwood. Yeah, so they obviously. Oh, that's Emma. It was Emma from WWE, correct. It was actually a dark match, so it wasn't actually shown on TV, but I thought that was pretty cool. Stella also tagged in a loss to a team which included Brittany Baker in Ring of Honor, Glory by Honor. So that was one of their pay-per-views, I believe. So she's actually had some fairly good matches early in her career. And in an event in Pittsburgh in November, she lost to Brandy Rhodes in a TV taping as well. Cody's wife. So oh. Stella's actually had some pretty big matches, although, like you said, she's not been wrestling for very long. Um, Jenny Rose has eight years more experience. She trained in the Ring of Honor Dojo, and some of her matches was um, she lost to James Ellsworth in the World Intergender title on Jericho's Cruise. Wow. And in Wait, no Kelsey was on Jericho's Cruise. She course. was. She might have seen that one, possibly. And in November, she lost to Sumi... I don't know how to pronounce this correctly. Sumi Sakai in a Ring of Honor New Japan Global Wars Wait, 2018 Is Sumi Sakai to Kodakai? No, oh. no. It's somebody totally different. No, this is Ring of Honor. Oh. WWE wrestlers aren't allowed to wrestle anywhere else. And she also had um, a Ring of Honor Women of Honor title uh, contendership match with uh, Kelly Klein. So she's also been on a few other Ring of Honor TV tapings as well. So she obviously has more experience, but oh. they're obviously fairly familiar with each other because I mentioned Ring of Honor for both of them. So if if NXT people can't fight anywhere else, we can't see Mia Yim again? Not while she's with WWE. No, they have exclusive contracts. Oh. But that's why Jordan Grace could, because she's not with WWE, she's with Impact, and Impact does allow you to rest. Because Impact tapes, like, several episodes together and they show them. Now, I actually looked up on um, cagematch.com for some of these ones. The comments about Jenny Rose were mean. Um, you get a rating out of 10, and normally even like your average wrestler is going to get like 6, something like that, and saying, hey, they need to work on things. Um, one of the reviews for Jenny Rose was 2 out of 10. Slow, mechanical, sloppy, weak. Been trying to improve for years, but has not. And Ring of Honor has to insist on improvement. Unlikely at this point, so cut ties with her. Uh, that was terrible. I did not see that at all. I thought both. I thought both of the girls were just fine. Um, another one was one out of ten. This girl isn't. This girl isn't any good. I really hope for her sake she gets better. I'm not really surprised that she's a Ring of Honor trained talent. She's on their shows because she's probably working cheap and she's not ready to be on TV. Man, that was brutal. I, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not quite sure when these reviews were written, but um, some people are really mean on Twitter. Um, you got to hope that they don't actually look at some of those things, because that could really doubt your confidence if you saw things like that. I thought that was terrible. Um, it was intermission, uh, but Brittany Blake comes out. Um, there was no match at the halfway point, and uh, oh, she said, I don't have a match at the halfway point, and if I don't have a match, there will be consequences. And we're like, okay, like what? And we would find out later what actually happened. Now, we don't have anything to talk about the intermission for this one, because we weren't there. So they just cut it, and then they went straight to the next match. So we got Kylie Ray versus Lainey Luck. Now, in the second one, they were actually tag teaming together, right? So this one was a heads up one. I think it's pretty sure that they're pretty clear that they're friends. I think that was pretty yeah. obvious, um, even though they were going against each other a little Kylie bit. Kylie was kind of turning heel. Uh, she was. Yeah, I didn't see. I've not seen that side of her um, at all on this one. It actually said that Kylie was injured at Nova Pro. 
He was. I didn't realise that. I remember the match that she was in, but yeah. Um, also, another one surprising. Kylie Ray has no ratings. Mm. Nobody rated so her on, the cage, on that cage side, or oh, whatever it's called, cagematch.com. Not one person had rated her. Um, she was trained by Booker T. She was? Yeah, I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, she only has two years of ring experience. So you were talking about people, how they haven't fought for very long. Mm -hmm. She's only fought for two years. And she won the May Young... No, not the May Young. She won the... Making Towns. Cla Making Towns Classic, yeah, she did. Um, she won nine out of her 13 matches as a rookie in 2016. That's nearly 70%. Now, normally as you're a rookie, you're going to lose matches because people are... Mm -hmm. You're going to put other like people that, over. Like that Japan guy? Um, yes, I can't remember his name, but yeah, he only won like 23% or something. But 70% as a rookie. That shows that's you how quickly that she's um, developed. That's going to bother me. I can't remember that guy's name. And I looked at it this morning as well. I remember I he's the young pictures. lion. Yeah, I don't remember his name, so it's not going to bother me at all. I don't remember then. I'm just not very good with Japanese names. And we don't watch we don't watch New Japan either. You're so. a Kashi or something? No. Hmm. No. Shoto Omino. There you go. That's him. That's him. Now, actually, in the middle of the match for this one, I did have that um, Kylie Ray actually sang Happy Birthday to Lady yep. Luck. Because it was actually her birthday, which was kind of funny. But she used it as a distraction to try and get a pinfall, but it didn't actually work. Mm -hmm. All right, what else have you got for this match, Mason? Um, Kylie Ray patted uh, Lady Luck on the head, disrespectful. <laughs> She Dis did. <laughs> Disrespectfully. She did. And actually, Lainey Luck got her back there as, as well. Uh -huh. So, But anyway, yes, she did. There was somebody yeah. else who did that. Um, Travis Huckabee did that to... Sage. Sage. And, and then Sage did it back to him as well. Uh -huh. And it was kind of... It, it mirrored that match for me a little bit. Yeah, like something that, well. that reminds me of Brock Lesnar. Four suplexes in a row to Ray. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Wow. That is a lot, yeah. Um, what else have I got on here? Uh, there was a submission move locked in, uh, but Laney Luck kept reversing, and then it was like a pin, and then they kept rolling back and forth, and it was alternate pins, mm -hmm. and um, Kylie eventually kicked out. Um, I do have Kylie Ray gets a chair, bangs it on the floor, yep. throws it to Laney Luck, drops to the floor. Oh, like so this the is Eliza like the, Drake. This is like the heel turn that you talked about, making the ref think that she'd obviously hit her with like a chain. Like uh, uh, VCW, it was Elijah Drake versus... Brandon Scott. Brandon Scott. Yep, so classic heel tactic. Oh, yeah. The, and... uh, Ray throws down uh, Lady Luck's um, unicorn mask. Yes, yep. And then it's a superplex to Lady Luck and double count out. Like, it was a double count out, yeah. There was a cannonball and double knees and they announced that there was five minutes left. So it was getting close on time with things like that. But they hugged it out at the end. You can't, like, they're both faces. You can't, like, make one win, and but both uh, everyone will be happy when you count them out. Mm -hmm. I thought it was weird how Kylie went heel and then not heel. and It was kind uh, of a strange thing. Uh, I much prefer her as a face. I would much prefer instead of a count out, you would have a time limit. So it doesn't look like they're... So they end up strong at the end of the match. Yeah, um, but, I guess and it was, it was like of, three minutes left. Huh? Now we should have got that because when we did our predictions, there was one match where I said there's actually no result, and I kind of forgot that actually. Having said I remembered some of the results, that was one I'd actually forgot. All right, next one was um, James Ellsworth and Sue Young, and this was for the intergender title. I don't um, think he's ever going to lose that intergender title. Uh, I don't think either, because I don't think he's going to be wrestling anymore. Um, mm -hmm. James probably won't be wrestling anymore. Why? Um, there was an incident, which I didn't talk to you about, but yes, he's not wrestling anymore. Um, he's not on the, the, the WP pod anymore. Um, nobody's hiring him anymore, as far as I can tell. Oh. So he's in a bit of trouble right now. So no, he probably he probably will keep that title, that's for sure. Um, what and have I you got still for didn't get match? my autograph. Um, no, you didn't, but I did talk to Dennis about that. And I, I actually asked, can we switch? I was like, can we, get a, can we have a second Petey Williams autograph? Even though we already have one, we'd prefer a second one instead of oh, James. Oh, I would have preferred a... Considering what happened, and he said that was okay. I would have so. preferred a Dennis Fair autograph. I don't think he has any 8x10s, because oh. we talked about that. Because we said, hey, we, we already have a Petey, we'd like a, a Dennis one. One, but I don't think he actually okay. has them, so. With him not being a wrestler. All right, what you got for this oh, match? Oh, yeah, James is scared of Sue. Um, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Every time I think of, when I said Sue, I was, uh, we do football sticker books, like American football, mm -hmm. and then it's 2016, so we have, there's a player for the Dolphins, Nadamagon Sue. And oh, you can pronounce his name. Oh, I can't pronounce his name. I was just thinking of him as Sue. I know he has a huge long name, and I've never been able to pronounce it. Yeah, he plays for the Rams now. Yeah. He, he's a bit of a beast. 
He wasn't when he played for the Dolphins, but now he's got a good team. He seems to be working a little bit harder. All right, what have you got for this actual match, though? Um, Sue, so, um, her leg collapsed. She did, match. yeah. It looked like she was severely injured. And then and she James, was... classic heel, kicks the leg a lot. Uh, of course, of course it did. Now, you mentioned that he was scared of her. He kept stepping out of the ring at the beginning, yeah. so she couldn't do anything, and he kept coming back in. Um, and eventually started, there was a few chops, and yeah, I have that same sort of thing, that yeah, he was stamping on her, but she carried on fighting. Um, what else? Um, Sue wins, and then the ref is, when the ref's looking away, uh, James put his foot on a rope, mm -hmm. and then he pretends that he had his foot on the rope the whole time. So the ref restarts the match, and then, um, Sue, um, she's celebrating, well, technically James did lose the title, he did, but yeah. they didn't recognize but, it. Yeah, but they, they announced restarted her as the winner, it. and yeah, they carried they on. They restarted it. James super kicked her. One, two, three. And I've also got Sue Young attacks the ref as well, and others who come to help. Which I'm guessing she was kind of upset, and she's a little scary anyway. That's her character. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also got Zoe Sky got missed in her eyes, and she had to be escorted to the back. And <clears throat> like um, the next one. And behind the curtain is a guy with a security on the shirt who did not come out, which I thought was kind of funny. So they had all these people who were coming out to help, and then they actually have a security guy, and he didn't do anything. So obviously he's a security guy for the actual building rather than for the wrestling. But I thought that was kind of funny. They didn't mm. actually do anything with that. All right, let's get to the main event. Now, you'll notice we talked about uh, Brittany Blake wanting a match. She's not in the main event. It's Jordan Grace versus Kelly Klein. And um, it was introduced, they introduced her as being from Ohio. And <laughs> Jordan's like, no. Nah. Um, she's from Kelly's, Austin, Texas. She's, exactly, she's from Texas. Um, Kelly is from Ohio, though, so they got that mixed up. I don't know how you would get that mixed up. I thought it was funny at the start as well. Kelly wanted to test her strength with Jordan Grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not going to work. Uh, oh, yeah, and work. talking about Jordan Grace, me and him can't fight anymore in Nova Pro, so that mex messes up my team, Mama Mia. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no, you'll have to think of another name instead. Well, at least Hallelujah isn't That's still, destroyed. That's still a possibility. Mm -hmm. That's still a possibility. Alright, what do you got for the match? Um, Kelly bridges, and then Jordan jumps up on top of her a lot, mm -hmm. but then Kelly still bridges. Now, I've seen that somewhere else. Yeah, at Jordan Pro. did. I, I can't think who Fred Yehi did it to Jordan. Oh, now I also think she might have done it as well against the person who you threw a streamer at. Um, his name I can't oh, remember right now. Martina. No. I was going to say. No, it's not no. Shotzi. That's no. what I was Shazza about. Shazza McKenzie. There you go. Thank you. Against Shazza McKenzie. I was about to say that English wrestler that's in Wolf Run. Uh, that's big. That's Nightshade? In, no. The one that's in NXT UK. Millie McKenzie? Yeah, I was about to say. Oh, because the same thing. Yeah, I kept getting Shotzi, and I, every time I wanted to say Shazza, I kept thinking Shotzi. And then you thought the same thing with the last name. Yeah, I can see how that would happen. I, I like it. I like those moves. I think it looks really cool. Like, they get the two, and then it shows the strength of each of them, and it's it's an interesting dynamic. Kelly but... Klein looks like she would have fit in the Four Horsewomen. Oh, you think so? For the MMA. Okay. They actually have their debut this week, or two of them do, finally. The two who have been uh, helping... Um... Yeah. Sh um, Shayna. Shana. There's too many names that begin with that sh sound. I keep getting them all Oh, up I know now. one of them. Jessamine Duke. There you go. And I can't remember the other one. But they finally have a tag team match against, and I don't remember who it's against. But yeah, they're finally going to start appearing a little bit. All right, anything for the match? That's it. And then Brittany Blake. <laughs> well, for All the right, first Brittany. match. Oh, for the first. Co correct. All Brittany right. Brittany so. comes out and makes it a triple threat match. Mm -hmm. And then a missile drop kick to Jordan. And then Gemma attacks Jordan while Kelly is submitting Brittany Blake. So Kelly Klein wins. Um, yes, and she'd already got the lock in, and that was it. Because I was kind of surprised. I was like, Jordan Grace didn't win. Exactly. She exactly. She reminds me of um, Shayna Baszler too, because they're both like have so many submissions, and they're they should both be the submission magician. <laughs> I think the idea is you have your own character. I know. If you're exactly the same, there's so much that alike. Works. That works too well. But, There's yeah. so much alike. And I have to admit, I didn't recognize Kelly Klein at all when we saw her at the second one. Because yeah. she came out like at the end and we're like, who's that? And I ge genuinely didn't yeah. know who it was. Frank... She's obviously kind of famous and I guess we just... Frank next to us told us it was Kelly Klein. Yeah, and I didn't know who it was. But yeah, I would say we would have been following indie wrestling for just over a year. 
And think of all the different organizations are in America. There's going to be a lot of people that we don't know. But as we keep going to events like this, you keep getting to find out more and more people. And I like that. I actually like finding out about new people as well each time. And um, yeah, it adds to the My whole thing. My favorite new person that I've thought of was the army guy at Crab Wrestling. Uh huh. I don't remember his He's name. He's really talented. Yeah, we got the look. one with the glow sticks. Ah, uh -huh. I remember who it is. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have to look see if that results listed anywhere, and then we can, um, yeah, we can find out some of their names. That's tough that first time when you go. Sometimes you can't always hear on the mics who everybody is. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty cool. It was Sergeant Seven or something like I that. I was gonna say Sergeant Slaughter for a minute. No. All right. I, anything else to add for this one? No. Um, I don't either, and the only thing I can say is um, I don't know when Fury Pro 3 event's going to be. Um, I haven't seen anything is it posted every, yet. every, like, two months? It's more than that. Um, I looked, and I haven't seen anything posted at all yet on their website, mm -hmm. so they haven't listed anything. All right, that'll do it. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Goodbye. goodbye. The music was Zigzag by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0, http colon slash slash creativecommons.org slash licenses slash people.